All right, so it turns out if I have a current carrying wire, let's get that current going again. Let's direct that current to the right one more time. So again, a current carrying wire is full of moving charges and therefore can experience a force due to the presence of magnetic field as long as some component of this is perpendicular to that magnetic field. So if we look then, we can say the exact opposite is true. Not only can he feel an external magnetic field, he can also create his own magnetic field. It turns out, you know, we looked at moving charges. Moving charges, to feel a magnetic field, you have to be a charge and you have to be moving, right? Well, it turns out moving charges also create their own magnetic field. So any force you can cause is one you might be able to ultimately create, right? So notice what force is pulling down on me right now gravity, but you guys look at this all backwards. You think of, you know, the earth is holding me down and I'm like, no, 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 I'm holding the earth up right now. That's how it's working. So, right? Earth's not pulling down on me. I'm pulling up on the earth. So it's all a matter of perspective and you guys have the wrong perspective. So cool. But any force, there's an equal and opposite force, Newton's third law, right? So if the earth's pulling down on me, then I am pulling up on the earth. So same thing here. This guy can feel a magnetic field, but he can also generate a magnetic field, it turns out, due to him as well. So it turns out that magnetic field is actually going to go in a direction radially around the wire, one way or the other. And we have a new right-hand rule for this one. So you got your thumb, So and that's where the current's going to point. And then you just got fingers, and that's where your magnetic field is going to point. And so what you do with this right hand rule is you put your thumb in the direction of the current and then your fingers curl around the wire to show you the direction of the magnetic field. And so in this case, it's just going around. Now let me ask you a question. Is this clockwise or counterclockwise? And be very careful before you answer that. It depends on if I'm looking at it from this side or if I'm looking at it from this side. And so we can't really say clockwise or counterclockwise with any kind of definitive answer here. So what we'll do instead is I'll tell you up above the wire, where does the magnetic field point? Out of the board in this case. If the current had been flowing to the left, it would have been into the board. So where does the current, I'm sorry, where does the magnetic field point directly below the wire? So again, thumb to the right, curls around the wire. So if it's going around the wire, think about this as the wire here. As it goes around directly above the wire, the magnetic field would point directly out, going around the wire. Directly below it, it points directly in. Going around the wire again, magnetic field right in front of the wire would actually point down, and going around the other side, point up. And it's just going around and around in a circle. Cool. So think about it this way again. If you recall, going around in a circle, let's say we got circular motion here. So let's say I got uniform circular motion. Where does the acceleration always point? Towards the center of the circle for uniform circular motion, centripetal acceleration, right? But where is your velocity point at any given point? Tangent to the circle, right? So at this point, it would point directly right, straight down, velocity to the, I'm sorry, directly left, directly right, and then straight up right here. So it's always tangent. We have the same thing going on with our circle around here for that magnetic field. So as you go around the circle, so as you go around the circle of the wire, so it points towards your right, it points up, it points towards your left, and it points down, going around the circle. And that's the direction of the magnetic field going around. So now, in orienting it this way, your magnetic field points into the board, up, out of the board, down, and just keeps going around. But it goes around radially, and you just need to put your thumb in the direction of that current to find out, does it go around this way, or does it go around this way? And indeed, in this case, it goes around this way. The Into the board. So again, as you curl around, where do you intersect the area right above the wire? Coming out of the board is where my fingers would point. Whereas coming back around to the other side, as we go around to the other side, they would point into the board. So again, keep that, let's make the red one the wire this time because it matches our current there. So if your magnetic field's going around this way, then up above it points out and down below it points into the board. 
Cool. So, and so again, where does it point out in front of the wire out here, out in front of the board? Where would that magnetic field point? Down. Down. And behind the board? Up. That's how it works. Cool. So now this is going to get tricky because now we can draw the magnetic field that this wire is causing. But earlier, we just showed the magnetic field that was external to this that he felt. And so students often get confused. So are we drawing the one he's causing or the one he's feeling? And stuff like that. Well, right now we're doing the one he's causing that is radially around him all the way around. And the closer you are to him, the bigger it is. So we shouldn't be surprised to see that your strength of your magnetic field is inversely proportional to the, the distance of separation, the distance away from the wire. Cool, the greater the current, the greater the magnetic field. So, and there's this lovely new constant, permittivity of free space, four pi times 10 to the minus seven, it's on your handout, just another constant to get thrown out there when we're talking about magnetism. Cool. Notice, look at your equation here. So with this right-hand rule, how many things did we have to define? Just two, why didn't we have a third? Well, there's no force as part of this. This has nothing to do with force, in and of itself anyways. So it is just the strength of the magnetic field due to a current in a wire. Cool, so that's why there's only two things to define. But this is a little different than the ones we've had, but at least your fingers and your thumb are still defined in the same fashion. All right, so we've got two wires here, and these wires are parallel, but their currents point in opposite directions. So question number two says, is the force between the following two wires attractive or repulsive? And what would be the effect of doubling the current in both wires on the force between the two wires? So let's look at this for a minute. So in this case, this is tricky because both wires cause a magnetic field. Both cause you know, a magnetic field due to exactly what we just said. But because they both cause a magnetic field, then each has the opportunity to feel the other's magnetic field. Now, if we talked about the, the magnetic field that each cause, what's our equation? Cool, but if we talk about the force that they feel due to the other's magnetic field, what's our equation? Yeah, BIL sine theta. So this is the magnetic field that one causes, but this is the force it feels due to the magnetic field the other one's causing, so on and so forth. So keep that in mind. So if we look at this, we wanna find out is this an attractive force or repulsive force? So in this case, either you know, both wires are repelled or they're both attracted to each other. And we're just gonna figure out the directions of the forces. But we gotta apply two right-hand rules, and this is super confusing the first time you do it. So first, let's look at the magnetic field that the red wire causes. So in this case, that's the one we already set up right over here, right? So the red current here, going to the right, has the magnetic field going around the wire. Where would that magnetic field point up here? So out of the, period, out of the board, yep, towards you. So where would it point out in front of the wire? Down. down, behind the wire? Up. Where would it point right down here in the plane of the board? Into the page. So. That's what I'm gonna do here. I don't really care where it, po it pointed in all those other instances. I just need to know exactly where it points right where this wire is. Okay, so if we look at that then, I can then, so that was this, uh, you know, kind of look at the right-hand rule that went with this equation for the red current. Well, notice everywhere down here in the plane of the board, it points in. It gets weaker the further you get away, and everywhere up here, it points out of the board. So, and everywhere out in front of it, the further you get away, it always points down and you know, so on and so forth. Cool, I just wanted you to show that, you know, everything below him, it all points in in the plane of the board here. Cool, so then the question is, what is the direction of the force on this wire, this equation now? So what's our right hand rule for this? Fingers go into the board, thumb in the direction of the current, where's the force? And the force it feels is indeed a downward force. Cool, two right-hand rules to figure that out. Now let's do the same thing for the other wire. So now this wire is feeling a force because the blue current is causing a magnetic field. Now the blue current here, its current points to the left and you curl your fingers around. So, and where would the magnetic field caused by this wire point? Way down here. 
So out of the board, and I don't care, right? Where would it point right out in front of the wire? Up. So where would it point up here where this other wire is located? Good, into the board, everywhere up here in the plane. And that's the only one I really cared about. We just had to get there. Cool, so now I look at the force this wire is gonna feel due to that magnetic field caused by the other wire, or the current in the other wire. And again, I go back to this equation and his right hand rule. And so in this case, fingers go in, current's going to the right, and where's the force? Up. And so it turns out what kind of force, attraction or repulsive here, it's a repulsive force. So it turns out if you have two parallel wires, their current needs to move in the same direction for it to be an attractive force. And we just learned that when it's in opposite directions, it's a repulsive force. Cool, but that's how this works. So notice that each wire, you've got two different sets of right-hand rules to apply, and it's real easy to get tripped up on what you're doing. So if we look at the second half of that equation, it says, so what would be the effect of doubling the current in both wires on the force between the two wires? So let's just pretend for a minute that this wire had a current of 20 amps, and this wire has a current of 10 amps. Which wire feels a bigger force then? It was a trick question, just so you know. So if I push you, Chris, what did you simultaneously do back to me according to Newton's third law? That's right, so I really appreciate it if your face would quit hitting my fist. I'd appreciate that. So but there's always an equal and opposite force. In this case, it's an equal and opposite force regardless of the actual currents between the two wires and stuff like that. So that's the first part. So actually, that's kind of an extra question I asked you there, but what would be the effect of doubling the current in both wires on the force they feel. So if I look, if I double the current in the wire, what's gonna to happen to that force? I'm doubling the current in both wires. So I'll make this 40 amps and 20 amps. What would that do to the force they feel? So it would multiply by four. That is right. So let's look at this. So if you look, if I double the current in one of the wires, what does that do to the magnetic field it, it causes? It doubles it. And then that magnetic field appears right here but I'm also doubling the current in the other wire, and so both of these are doubled, and the force is quadrupled. Pretty cool with that. Cool. So it's really easy to get focused only on this equation that deals with force, and be like, oh, you double the current? Only one of them shows up, so you double the force. Well, they technically both show up, it's just the other one shows up inside of the magnetic field created by the other wire. So, what was the first one you mean, the so if you double the current in both wires, what happens to the force they feel? And in this case, it quadruples. So the one before, I was just saying, who feels a bigger force? And that was where they're equal and opposite. Equal in magnitude, opposite direction. Clark. How do you know which way to um, have your hand facing? So which way it's... So your thumb just has to go with the current. So you're talking about for the right-hand rule in this guy? Yeah. Yep, if your thumb goes with the current, your fingers can only curl one way. If you can curl them the other way, props to you. So, and you're screwed on this anyways. <laughs> so, but in this case, thumb goes this way, then your fingers have to curl that way. So out of the board down here, into the board up here, up out in front of the wire, down behind the wire. The only place I cared about where his magnetic field he was causing was happening was at the other wire's location. And up there, it's going into the board. Down here, it's going out of the board, but there's nothing here to feel it, so I didn't really care to write it. Cool. Could you just use the one right hand roll device? So for the top wire, it would be going into the board on the bottom. For the bottom wire, it would be going into the board on the top, so you would have both of them. So you, and we found out that exactly fact, you know, into the board at both locations was true. So, and because the currents pointed in opposite directions, they were gonna feel a force in opposite directions, but we still had to figure out, was it up and down or down and up to f still figure out if it was attractive or repulsive. Okay. So we still had to apply that other right-hand rule. All right, question number three. We have an electron right above this wire. So this wire has a current pointing to the right. So in the question says, the electron depicted below is directly above the wire and is experiencing a force in the downward direction due to the magnetic field created by the current in the wire. What is the direction of the electron's velocity, velocity at this moment? So this thing is, this electron is feeling a force pointing down, a magnetic force pointing down. And so the question is, well, okay, what velocity does it, what's the direction of its velocity at this point? Okay, so 
right hand rule, what needs to point towards the, what's usually the force? The palm, since this is a negative charge, we'll be thinking that it's the opposite though, so we'll keep that in mind. So, cool, current is gonna match up with your thumb and magnetic field. Where's the magnetic field point at that location? So that's another two right hand rules in the same problem kind of thing. So first right hand rule again deals with this guy and at this location with the current pointing to the right, where's the magnetic field point right where that electron's located? Good. It's out of the board everywhere up there. These are really pathetic circles. Okay, cool. Now that I know that the magnetic field points that direction, I'll put my fingers out of the board. I'll put my thumb to the right with the current, and if this were a positive charge, the force w it fells f would be down. Oh, what am I getting wrong now? So my bad, let's, let's rewind there a sec. So we did this lovely equations right-hand rule to figure out the magnetic field here. Now actually what right-hand rule, what equation right-hand rule do I need? QVB sine theta. So, and if you call his right hand rule, puts the velocity as your thumb, so I can't use the current's velocity. That's a different right hand rule entirely. I'm looking at the electron now. So, in this case, I've still got my magnetic field's got a point out of the board. So, and the question is, is my velocity, where does it need to point so that the back of my hand goes down? To the what? So where's the velocity? There you go. I'll throw one to here. Yeah, for the force to point down, that velocity had to point off to the left here. Right, right. So notice if we do this, if we did this for, let's just envision him as a positive charge for a minute. Fingers out of the board, right? And if your thumb goes to the left, then where would the force for a positive charge be? Up, but we had a negative charge and the force is indeed down. We've totally matched it up.